somewhat sad to say that the sax deflector has claimed its first victim which is my eyes and mouthpiece can you guys see that on there I think I'm not quite sure because I just came to teach that my alto the other day and a whole chunk of the eyes and has gone of my alto mouthpiece look at that and I think what knocked it was this sax deflector it really shouldn't break that easily. Anyway, kids are back to school today, wife's back at work, and kind of back into routine again. I'm someone who argues against routines but secretly loves them. Um, so I'm trying to get some practice done today. I've spent the morning working on programming uh, the autumn season of jazz at Saffron Hall. We'll talk about that in today's vlog a little later on, but right now I've got some practice I need to get done. <laughs> So that bit when you did a great piece to camera, but you actually press the time lapse button rather than the record button. There you go. Well, what I was trying to say to you outside, let's move back a bit there. What I was trying to say to you outside is, we spent the morning programming the next season of jazz for Saffron Hall, and I kind of wanted to just to take you through a bit of my process, because if you're an aspiring musician yourself, or if you are a musician, you may be where I've been in the past, which is when you're on the other side, and I still am from lots of times, where you're the person pitching for the gig. You're the person wanting to try and get hold of the gig or break into a new venue. And one thing that's always frustrated me is, how do some people get in there and I don't, or others don't? Um, and sometimes, yeah, you know, let's talk about jealousy. Let's talk about... I'm better than them, how are they getting the gig? Those kind of emotions, which do strike you, and if they're not striking you, then you must be a really zenned out person, or you're lying to yourself, to be brutally honest, or you're lying to other people, because it's all natural to get jealous sometimes about things. The times in my life when I've got, allowed that to really upset me or annoy me have been times where music has been far too important in my life. Music is important to me, but it's not the most important thing. I'm reminded of a quote from the great Ronnie Scott who was asked when he had his Gerrard Street uh, venue, which was the smaller Ronnie Scott's before he got the building on Frith Street, which is where it still stands today. He was asked, hey, why do you keep booking all these saxophone players? And he was like, well, I, I like these saxophone players, I want to book them. Sadly, I can't just book people I like. Everybody I do book, I do like, but I've got to bring more things into the equation. And these things are things that matter. I need to know that, and I've said this before on other vlogs, I need to be able to trust the person. I need to be able to know that they're gonna do a good job. They're not gonna get absolutely blind drunk and insult the audience. I wanna make sure that they're gonna be well-dressed, that they're gonna listen to what the venue managers say. I'm also very picky about the venues I work in. I've got more picky over the years. I've explained that in other vlogs and I'll explain it again another time. But number one, I've got to be good musically. Number two, but that's not the, mo that's not the only factor I should say. It is important, it's not the only factor. Number two, I need to know they're going to be professional show. Number three, I need to know that you're going to shift tickets, that you're going to be popular enough that people are going to come along because at the end of the day, if I'm booking the bands and no bugger shows up, it doesn't reflect well on me. You know, they're, they're not gonna trust my judgment as well. So, and I hate that to a certain extent because I want, but then, yeah, I kind of want to book good people and you know, it's not always a great reflection just because you sell tickets. But through my experiences, as you get better, and if you're starting out, you've got to play a lot of gigs where there's 10 people in the room or less. Treat that like it's, um, 
you know, there's 10,000 people there. I want to tell you a very quick story because of that. Um, in his autobiography, Sting talks about how when the police were first cracking America, they played a gig, and I can't remember where it was, some city in the Midwest, and there were four people in the front row of this 10,000-seater theatre. Now, they could have gone on stage and been completely despondent, and he says when they were on stage, they were despondent, but they found it within themselves to do that number two thing, professionalism. They got in there and they played a gig as if there were 10,000 people in there. Three of those four people who were sat in the front row were radio DJs who were so thrilled with the show that the next day and the day after that, all they did was constantly on loop, almost play lots and lots of police records, which got them a massive audience, which they helped them break America. So you never know who's in the audience and you've got to always, that second thing, pulling out a mega professional performance really, really matters. The other thing is answering my emails quickly. Most people now have phones and laptops. It shouldn't take you longer than 24 hours to respond to an email, especially if it's some, from someone offering you a gig. If you don't, don't expect to get the gig again in the future. That matters. Even if you, you know, I'm sorry, but even if you're away, if you're away, stick an autoresponder on so the person knows that you're not contactable. That's really important because, again, it's showing respect to the people on the other side of the coin. And it's a two way thing. You know, you do that, you get a good, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Don't do what some people have done with um, with this venue is they've kind of gone behind my back and gone and spoke to somebody else at the venue who then just forwards their email straight to me having I've already told them to you know wait in line and stuff and at the end of the day you're breaking rule number two you're right down the bottom of the list I don't care how good you are you're doing those kind of tactics I'm not going to trust you to deliver a good performance on that I hope that helps I'd we had this in, a, in another vlog over here a while back and I wasn't meaning to be disingenuous about it. I'm just trying to share with you the other side of the coin because this other side of the coin mystified me for a long time. And what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and bring in a friend of mine, Nia, who used to organise a jazz festival. And we'll try and do a Skype interview with Nia and we'll, I'll talk to her. But these, these are conversations I've had with her over time as well. And she said the same things to me as of countless other promoters. And it's this kind of behind this magic door, what happens? How, how do the influencers make their decisions? Those kind of things. I want to have another Q&A soon. So if you've got any more Q&As on this subject or any of the subjects of the previous vlogs, please put your comments. Please put them on the right video so I know what you're talking about. I'm intending the next vlog to be on Friday, but it might be sooner, uh, just to see how tomorrow goes. There was one other thing that was um, in my mind to sort of talk to you guys about. Go to, if you're, if you're interested in the saxophone, I'm just putting up today a load of lessons on facebook.com forward slash Cambridge saxophone. I've taken some of the content off the site and I'm putting it onto the Facebook page for free. If you like that page, then you'll be able to watch the videos where well, you can watch the videos anyway, but if you like it, you'll get notified when the new ones come up. I'm staggering them over the week so they can come out. Let me know what you guys think about them because like I said in the survey, I'm thinking of changing things around a little bit. More of that will come through over the next few weeks as we go along. But I think that's about all I'm going to put in today's vlog. I need to get this vlog edited for you. I need to do a little bit more teaching and then I'm heading out to play football. So I reckon now's as good a time as any to say that's the end of today's vlog. Oh, before I go, I haven't done a little subscriber vlog. Don't forget, if you don't already, please hit the subscribe button. And have you checked out this video yet?